have to go down the tent area. The strange metal artifact I found in Plantard's pouch had pointed back to the quayside. We're at the quayside, which is an hour later. Well, we're back here now. Let's see. Let's enter that room again. There's that thing again. It's also this. It was almost as if the fence was intended to double as a bridge. It was surprising. I really didn't want to pull the fence back up and risk trapping myself in this place. Yeah. Moving a skiff would only damage it more. I'd wreck the skiff. Not that it was particularly seaworthy anyway. Yep. Well, let's move across back into this room. Do I need that thing again to actually open it, or...? The slab was too heavy for me to lift. Yep. I'm gonna have to go ahead and do this again. Alright. Where is it? There it is. Alright. Now then, let's actually get inside here. The slab was too heavy for me to lift. You're kidding. Okay. Oh yeah, that's right, I have to use it on the hole. I forgot, I need to do this. I forgot I still had this for some reason. I don't know why I still have this. I should just keep it in there. Whatever. Anyway, I think it's about time we uh, try some stuff out like this uh, artifact we got here on this hole. Might as well, it's the first thing I can think of. And it works! Plantard's key fitted the lock, so he must have used this place too. Right, let's go on that safe. Okay, let's see. What's this? A photograph had been torn up. Oh no. If I could just arrange the pieces. Oh boy! These ones are never fun. Oh, let's let's do our best. Is it clicks? Here. Oh my god! It can't be. I think it is, Nico. I think it is. Let's see. Yep, that fits. Uh. That was at the corner. That goes there, I think. Uh, there? Yeah, I think there. Yeah, because that goes there. Um, that is... Don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Let's not screw around with that for a good bit. Um, this is a corner. This is the wrong piece. There we go. Yeah, that makes sense. So, what's this piece then? I guess it goes there? I think so. Cause I think it's a yeah, because this piece. There we go. It's not so hard as I thought it would be. I was thinking that the fucking... The Ripper game, which it would be like... Incredibly difficult because of how precise you need to do with the cup. Uh, but no, this is actually... Very easy. There we go. There was no doubt about it. It was a picture of my father. And there we go. Papa? Oh God. After what I'd gone through, I thought I could face anything, but not this. My father, the one person in the whole world who I truly admired, standing with Cachon 
while those murderers carried on with their evil work. My father, grinning at the camera. I couldn't believe it. I realized that I desperately needed to get to the bottom of this story, and that I really needed George. We can do this, Nico. We can figure out this mystery. And here we are! We're now back in the original game. Nothing new here, even though it was blinking at us like there was something new. Usually you have the map and you go immediately there, but whatever. Oh, hi! Bonjour, monsieur. Would you like me to foretell your future? Uh, no thanks. I'm very good, it only takes a minute. Thanks all the same, but I'm not superstitious. Besides, if it only takes a minute, that's not much of a future to look forward to. Okay. Okay. Do you know a young woman called Nicole Collard? Yes, I do. She lives upstairs from me in the apartment block across the street. The door isn't locked, but you'll need to give it a gentle nudge. It sticks, you see, because of the dam. The landlord said he'd fix it before winter sets in. He's been saying that for three years. Beware the damp. How long has Mademoiselle Collard lived here? A few months. She's in for a shock when the cold weather comes. Drafty windows, insufficient heating. It's a struggle to keep warm. The only reason I stay is because the rent is cheap. Your young lady, she deserves better. <laughs> uh, look at the flower option. Are the flowers for sale? Oui, monsieur. Okay. I'll take a bunch of those white ones. I wouldn't do that if I was you. No? They are lilies, monsieur. Some people associate them with death. Yikes. Thanks for telling me. What other flowers do you have? Dahlias. What do they signify? Insecurity. Hmm. I don't want to give her the wrong idea about me. What about the tall yellow ones? Those are iris, the flame of passion. And the little yellow ones? Sensuality. Well, they're no use to me. I want to make an impression, not jump down her throat. Oh, <laughs> uh, well. I thought Mademoiselle Collard was a successful photographer. Not as successful as she makes out for all her fine clothes. Oh, I've heard her crying herself to sleep at night. That's awful. Now, don't you let on that I've told you. She's proud, that one. Too proud, if you ask me. Uh, what else do we have, Nico? Have you seen anyone out here watching Mademoiselle Collard's apartment? Yes, I have. A strange man. Tall and thin as a broomstick. He kept his face hidden. But I saw his eyes peering from evil little slits. How was he dressed? A long brown raincoat with a hat. Or like Humphrey Bogart? Yes, but he didn't have Bogart's charisma. Besides, this guy looked like he needed a toilet. You never saw Bogart clenching his buttocks like that. <laughs> Is there anything else you can tell me about Mademoiselle Collard? No, monsieur. Alright, what about this, uh, this power you have? I've changed my mind. Will you tell my fortune? You're going on a long journey. My, oh my. What a surprise. Can you tell me anything I don't already know? How does this fortune-telling routine work? If I knew that, I wouldn't be selling flowers for a living. <laughs> Haven't you ever wondered why you were blessed with the gift? Well, it's a bit like satellite television, I suppose. Some of us are born with a built-in receiver dish. I just happen to be one of the lucky ones. Can you really foretell the future? Only time will tell, monsieur. The strange thing is, I can't seem to see myself in the future. Other people, I have no problem. But when I try to see what might happen to me, nothing. That must be scary. Maybe. I figure it's a kind of natural safety mechanism. Either that, or I don't have a future. <laughs> That's kind of sad. What do you make of this tool? 
Is it something a dentist would use? No, it's for raising manhole covers. Formidable. <laughs> Do you recognize this nose? No, monsieur. And now for gag. What can you tell me about this tissue? Nothing. Uh. What can you tell me about this material? It's a very expensive piece of cloth, monsieur. And that's about it. See you later. That's right, monsieur. You will. And there we go. Now it's time to actually enter Miko's apartment. Remembering the flower seller's advice, I pushed the door gently just above the lock. Hi. Bonjour. I'm glad you could make it, monsieur. Uh, please, uh, call me George. Fine. I'm Nicole. Take a seat, George. Eh bien? And what have you been up to? I've been exploring the sewers underneath the cafe. I thought I could smell something bad. The clown used the sewer to escape and to change out of his costume. I guess he was in a hurry. He left his jacket behind. And? I got his tailor's phone number. You had better luck than I did. Luck, she said. Luck. Hard work, I'd call it. <laughs> what happened? My editor told me to drop the story. Can you believe it? But you're not going to do that. Oh, no. I'm going to find out what's behind these killings. It just doesn't add up. It almost feels like some sort of conspiracy. The police in three different countries have kept very quiet about the murders. The press don't connect them at all. They blame them on political, religious, or militant minority extremists. Well, that covers just about everyone. Let's uh, talk about Nikkei for a bit. Tell me more about yourself. <laughs> There's nothing much to tell. Well, how'd you get into photography? I guess I owe that to my father. He bought me my first camera. I was eight, and my parents had just split up. Did you live with your father? Yes. My mother went off with her new boyfriend. I didn't mind. Papa was all I needed. Four years later, he died in a plane crash. Oh, I'm sorry. It's all right. I don't mind talking about him. He was more like an older brother, really. Always joking and laughing. Papa always wanted me to study art. That's why I went to college. Did you learn about photography at college? God, no. I couldn't afford the materials. We were billed for everything we used. Paint, canvas, paper. Most of my year turned to minimalism. It was cheaper. I used to go poaching in the park for squirrel hair. The only time I wasn't hungry was the term I did printing. I used to eat the potatoes. You're making fun of me, aren't you? Oh, no. Tell me more about the clown's previous victims. The first was Arnaud Bellotta, the millionaire pharmaceutical baron. He made his money from amphetamines in the post-war slimming and diet boom. Imagine it, millions of housewives literally speeding their butts off. The only witness in the case was his Filipino au pair. She swears he was lured to his death by a snowman. What about the clown's second victim? Yamada, the controversial Japanese politician. He inherited his fortune from his father's electrochemical consortium. How did he die? At the hands, or should I say flippers, of a giant emperor penguin. A snowman, a penguin, and now a clown. I had been about to add mine to the list, but stopped myself. I really didn't want to have to explain to George about my father's involvement with Cachon. You know, I hate to admit it, but this is scary. And I'll tell you this, I will not be accepting any invitations to costume parties. I don't blame you for being scared. I am too. But this story could be my only chance for a big break. Or an early death. Let's try some stuff. This is the tool I use to get into the sewers. Fascinating, George. You're not interested, are you? Oh, of course I am. I think it was very brave of you to go down those sewers. Yeah? Well, it was kind of scary, but... Well, I had a job to do. And let's give her the nose. I found this false nose in the sewer. Hey, what's this inside it? The contents of someone's nose? Don't be gross, George. It says La Rite du Monde. Masks and costumes. It's a costume shop near the Gare Saint-Lazare. I'll check it out. Maybe the owner remembers who hired the clown costume. There we go. We also have gag time. I found this tissue down the sewer. That's disgusting, George. No, no, no. I think the stuff on it is grease paint. 
like actors use or clowns? It's still disgusting. Get rid of it. <laughs> no one likes it when George fucking shows him disgusting stuff. It's always funny. I found a piece of material near the cafe. When I showed it to the concierge, he recognized it right away. It's very distinctive, all right. Just wait until you see this. I developed the film I shot at the cafe. Here, George. It's an enlargement I made. Look what that guy is wearing. Checkered pants. The same material as I found in the sewer. That's right. This guy shouldn't be difficult to find. Oh, no? Take a close look at his right cheek. A scar in the shape of a horseshoe. Or hmm. a crescent moon. Well, then. How come you enlarged this photograph of me? Because I noticed the guy behind you, of course. Well, that makes sense. I have to go. Okay, I'll see you later. And we just automatically teleport back outside. But now we have a lot to look at. Visit Nico. Turns out her head is spite the stories, more important guys, yada yada yada. So the clown knows we have a location. Nico Sharp. The material we found gives us a photo photograph. And there is a man wearing trust the same material and has a scar on his cheek of the shape of a crescent moon. We need to pay attention to that. Now, back then, you know, things were a lot more pixelated and such. There's a lot more um, detail in the director's cut versions. That's good news. Let's actually leave now. Now then, let's head to... Let's see, where is Laurie... Blah, 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 blah. There we go. Laurie's de Mondi. Right. Let's talk to him. <coughs> Excuse me. Bonjour, monsieur. Please, come in. Welcome. Leave the mundane world behind. For in these four walls, fantasy is king. Uh, I don't want a costume. Didn't you ever dress up when you were a child? Not that I remember. Incredible. You'll be telling me next that you never shared your elder sister's lingerie. I don't have a sister, and I think I'd look pretty silly in a brassiere. I just need some information. Of course. How can I help you? Uh, let's start off with this guy. Have you heard of a man named Plantile? I do not recall any one of that name. And that that does it for that one. I'm looking for a man who hired a clown costume from you. Oui, monsieur. I do not see how I can help. Don't you keep a record of costumes that you've rented out? Of course, monsieur, but... Uh... Well, then, I'd like to check your records. Give me the names of everyone who's rented a clown suit. Impossible. There are too many. So he chose the common one. Damn. What does this tool mean to you? Nothing, monsieur. Okay. What about the tissue? Does this dirty tissue mean anything to you? Hmm. Let me smell that. Best Imers number seven, white pancake. Theatrical grease paint, right? Oh, oui, monsieur. La creme de la creme of Cespian accoutrement. Have you sold any of it recently? Yes, two can. Perfect. How about the nose? Do you want this red nose back? Not after it's been worn, thank you. Dang. Uh, the photograph. Do you recognize this man? Ah oui, he was ill this morning. That is the man to whom I sold the grease paint. I remember the scar on his face. He chose two costumes. Bozo the clown and Seamus the pixie. A pixie? Very smart. Green silk with a taffeta lining. He gave me his name as Monsieur Khan. Now we know his name. Come. Thanks for your help, buddy. My pleasure, monsieur. Allow me to shake you by the hand. Um, and... Well, okay. What 
are you trying to do? Kill me? <laughs> you did not find it amusing? I never saw the funny side of electroshock therapy. Eh bien, it is yours to keep. A gift? Do I need a license? No, but I give you a word of warning, monsieur. What? Remember to switch it off before you visit the toilet. <laughs> uh, that line. So, we now know a lot more about Khan. And now we're on his trail. Let's exit the shop. And let's go back to the cafe. So I think we'll need to... Uh, that's right, let's try uh, Tartrick again. This time I might be able to get some more information out of good old Tartrick. It's the only phone we know of right now, at least. Hello? Who is this? Mr. Tartrick? Oh, it's you again. What now? How about the, uh, you know, Mr. Khan? The man I'm looking for is called... Khan. He bought a suit from you. Remember? Mr. Khan. Yes, I remember him. Yes, I delivered the suit to his hotel. The Hotel Ubu. Uh, I uh, don't remember the room number. It was upstairs. The second room on the right-hand side of the corridor. Thanks, Todrick. That's all I wanted to know. Now I've got you, Mr. Clown. Ha ha! Now we know about the hotel. We're getting close to where I actually start playing the game, the original game, though. Uh, because I didn't play this game much. I was playing the PS1 version a lot more than I was playing the original. And uh, I kind of stopped when I was done at the hotel and did some other stuff, sadly. But I did enjoy what I was playing, so there's that at least. But you know what? I actually want to continue on and see what else uh, this game contains. I don't want to look up some YouTube videos for that stuff, so... Let's go ahead to the hotel, and uh, see what we can find. Oh look, it's the Fugs. Excuse me? Yeah? Let's, uh... Give him a little handshake. Shake my hand? Nah! Oh, rats. Damn it! Right. Let's not worry about them not right now. You see me first. And let's actually just go inside the hotel. Right. Let's go past all these people. No point to all these people right now. The clerk is more important currently. I remember this very well. I want some information. Who are you? The police? I'm conducting a private investigation. Ah, I know only too well what you mean. That is one of the drawbacks of the catering business. When people book into an hotel, they leave their morals at home, no? Right. Clown first. I'm looking for a man who dresses like a clown. This is a highly respectable hotel, monsieur. There are no clowns here. If you say so. Do you know a man named Plantar? No, monsieur. Alright, what about the Crescent Moon guy, Khan? Do you have a guest by the name of Khan? No, monsieur. Perhaps you would care to check the register. You are bullshitting. The man who calls himself Khan has a scar on his right cheek. Vraiment? I tell you, I do not know a man named Khan. Maybe not. But I noticed a change in his expression when I mentioned the scar. Yeah. Hey, shake my hand. I'd rather not, monsieur. I'm still sore from the shock administered by one of the guests. He was secretly concealing an electrical device in the palm of his hand. Practical jokes are so puerile, don't you think? Oh, yeah, sure. Dang, someone already did it for us. But the tissue gag, we must. What do you make of this tissue? Do you wish me to dispose of it for you, monsieur? Hey, no! It could be useful. I'm holding on to this. <laughs> As you wish, monsieur. 
Perhaps you would like a little plastic baggie? <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's fine the way it is. Alright. Let's give him the photograph. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? Yes, monsieur. That man is one of our guests. What name? <laughs> I cannot tell you that. Huh. Do you recognize this red nose? No, monsieur. And... What do you make of this tool? <gasps> Stunning, monsieur. I bet you handle it like a professional. He's been a sarcastic prick. I hate this guy so much. But it's now time for us to, uh, you know. Hanging from a brass hook was a key and a plastic tag. I'm just gonna casually. Excuse him, one, monsieur. What? You are trying to steal that key? No. No way. <laughs> oh god. Right, now I can talk to these people. Excuse me, didn't I see your picture in the news? You're that Nobel Prize winner from some unpronounceable Eastern European state. Yes, that is me, in person. I don't want to worry you, but have you had any threats on your life? You know, mysterious phone calls, letters made up of headlines cut from the newspaper. I don't know what you're talking about. Let's uh, begin with this guy first. Do you know a guy called Plantow? I don't know anybody in Paris. Oh, well, this guy's dead anyhow. Why do you ask me about dead men? I have seen enough of death to last me a lifetime. I'm uh, sure you have. Have you seen a clown? I beg your pardon? The clown. A guy in funny pants. Have you seen him? My pants are from England. <laughs> Marks and Spencer. They are a pleasure and a comfort to wear with much support. I'm real glad to hear that. You know, it's good to know you Nobel Prize winners are human too. In my country, the people make do with string and egg cartoons. For pants? For everything. Oppression is the mother of ingenuity. Okay then. May I shake you by the hand? I do not shake the hands of imperialist dogs. Well, now, that's fuck. That's a real bad attitude problem you've got there. Yeah, that really is. But the tissue? Does this goo smeared tissue mean anything to you? No, it doesn't. Shove it around his face. What does this clown's nose suggest to you? In my country, we have no use for clowns. I'm glad to hear it. They were dealt with most severely in the last cultural cleansing. What about mm. the mimes? Did you get them too? All gone. Our streets are mime-free. Sounds like heaven. <laughs> Have you any idea what this tool might be used for? I cannot guess. Would it mean anything if I told you it was for lifting drain covers? Nope. Such technology fills me with wonder. He couldn't care less. Do you recognize this man? He calls himself Khan. Yes, I know this man. Why do you carry his photographs? I'm a private detective. What's your interest in Khan? He is an enemy of my people. You know he's a killer? Of course. Amongst other things. Would you help me investigate Khan? That is not possible. My instructions are to observe. I cannot jeopardize my position as an honored guest of this country's government. And that's it. Thanks for your help. Goodbye. Nana talked to her on the piano. Be lady Hi there, ma'am. <laughs> well, hello. What can I do for you? <laughs> I'm looking for a man. You disappoint me, my dear. For one foolish moment, I thought. But never mind. Aren't you going to tell me your name? Uh, George. George Stobart, ma'am. How sweet! I once had a stable boy called George. I am Lady Piermont. The common reaction is to kneel and stutter, but it's not obligatory. 
A real lady? I mean, you're an honest-to-God aristocrat? Oh, I don't know about that. Few of my ancestors are honest, not even to God. I can trace my family back to the Normans, but don't let that intimidate you, George. Beneath that impressive pedigree, I'm just flesh and blood. The blood may be blue, but the flesh is the plump beef of old England, so to speak. You appear distracted, George. Is there any way I can help you?